from Asia's highest peaks to its valleys downstream, how people and wildlife are coping with climate change. Voices from the Roof of the World. Incredible things happen when land meets water. A dizzying variety of life begins to thrive. Healthy wetlands nourish both long-distance travelers and stealthy permanent residents to be admired or feared. Wetlands are also critical for human survival. They soak up torrential rains and overflowing rivers mitigating increasingly catastrophic floods. During droughts, they can replenish parched fields by releasing water from natural reservoirs. They can even filter out pollutants from human waste. But more than anything, wetlands are nature's nurseries. They are some of the most biodiverse ecosystems on Earth, supporting 40% of the world's wildlife. But wetlands cannot survive without water. As the climate changes, rains are becoming uncertain, droughts more severe, and it's getting hotter. And the Indus River, Pakistan's lifeline, has been crippled by dams and pollution. But one threat looms above all others. Melting glaciers provide 80% of the Indus River's water. When glaciers shrivel, wetlands dry out, endangering the future of both people and wildlife. On a floating village in the middle of Pakistan's largest lake live a people called the Mohanas. Their lifestyle and culture are over 5,000 years old. Bashir belongs to a new generation of Mohana who have settled on shore. He remembers the good times fondly.
हमारे को कोई टेंशन नहीं था पहले हमारे मन झील के अंदर सब्जियां है ना सारी झील के अंदर थी अनाज की कोई टेंशन नहीं थी मोहानों के लिए बट लाइक मंचर हैज चेंज्ड ड्रास्टिकली फॉर द मोहानास ये जालीला पानी जक मकलियो ला सारी तबाह के पीछे ये पानी जहरीला आया सारी हर शे खत्म खुशी सारी खत्म पहले मिठा पानी है दरिया जा ये सब परेशान में पर वो सब कुछ भी काबू पानी ये मछी है मैं मुछा सा पेट में थी लोग इसलिए हम ये घर बनाए हुए हैं अभी जब हम किसी छोड़ के आए हैं तो मजा नहीं आ रहा इधर तो बहुत तो मुश्किल हो रही है अभी यहाँ आज के लिए बहुत तड़प रहे हैं पानी एक ड्रम चालिया पे पानी दी पीऊ कि यो पानी पीऊँ था कोड़ो डॉक्टर दे वजू ब हज़ार खड़ी खड़ी वही बहुत बहुत दुखी जिंदगी ये काट रहे हैं हम यहाँ पे आज खाया तो कल आ देगा कैसे सोच रहे हैं फिशिंग इज बिकमिंग हार्डर इन पाकिस्तान मार्शेज But the pied kingfisher is up to the challenge. This family of master fishermen are warming up for a day of work. A pied kingfisher is perfectly designed for the job. It is the largest bird in the world that can hover in still air, beating its wings 10 times a second. Its head is perfectly still while its tail steadies the body. Once the target is locked down, it commences its dive. Because hovering is so energy intensive, a pied kingfisher must catch up to half its body weight a day. And even more when there are new mouths to feed. The chick is big, just like its appetite. It eagerly awaits the parent's return. But dad is holding on to the chick's next meal because he knows it's time for the chick to spread its own wings. The chick doesn't take the bait. And in the end, it can't even hold on to the fish. It's a scary world out there for a young kingfisher. the towering egrets with their threatening beaks the ferocious mongoose and the bullying crows but the biggest threat it will face is the loss of its habitat a third of the world's wetlands have vanished since 1970 contributing to a decline of over 80% of the freshwater fish Industrial effluence and illegal fishing are also responsible for this loss. Aun bhi fishri waah jake theek hai jan unhe ke jaro hone aake 
अध्ययन आई बिज सड़ के अचे काबू सुख बस उतरे वो तो लगो तो हलो तो पर अस मू खाएं था के इन सुमी था पड़ Pakistan is one of the most water-stressed countries in the world. But we are still blessed with 19 Ramsar sites, which are wetlands of international importance. Every year, over a million birds pass through the Indus flyway. As dawn breaks over Lung Lake, Competing ducks clamor for their favorite spots. It is a smaller, healthier neighbor of the ailing giant, Lake Muncher. But the lake still attracts flocks of migrants from as far away as Siberia. In December, the marshes are teeming with ducks, which have flown thousands of miles to get here. carrying excess baggage or body fat is not an option it would make these ducks too heavy to fly so healthy refueling stations are critical to an untrained eye all ducks may look the same with their stout bodies short wings and flat beaks but one bird stands out in the crowd the northern shoveler with its broad bill it can put its beak just about anywhere under water and shovel out its food it's easy to be a glutton when you have the right equipment but those who aren't so well endowed have to put in a little more effort like these elegant pintails it is easy to guess where their name comes from bottoms up and heads down that's how pintails and mallards reach the tasty tidbits this seemingly clumsy behavior is called dabbling all ducks spend a lot of time grooming their feathers A nice bath removes parasites and dirt. Afterwards, drying stations are in high demand for all the dandies who must comb and oil their precious coats. A flap of the wings puts their outfits back in place. But looking good has a practical function. It helps the duck stay buoyant and cool. Cormorants take a very different approach. What seems like a handicap gives the cormorants an advantage. With less air trapped on their bodies, they can dive deep in pursuit of fish. But after the fishing is done, they have to dry out their equipment. By spreading their wings in this awkward pose. Deep in the marshland's reeds, another European visitor is hiding in the bushes. The spotted crake's colors are the perfect camouflage. Its long toes help the crake saunter over soggy mud as it searches for invertebrates.
and its short thin body allows it to run through vegetation in case of an aerial attack. A marsh harrier is gliding low to follow its prey. It's a hunting tactic called quartering. It often ends with a successful kill. But here in the wetlands, even harriers have their enemies. A mongoose can easily steal its kill and looting is not the only strategy of this creative hunter. This mongoose has studied the cormorant's fishing holes. It puts that knowledge to good use. After an epic journey of 3,000 kilometers, the Indus River finally reaches the Arabian Sea. Branching into a massive delta that has sustained wildlife and people for ages. एक कुदरती निजाम है ना तेरे सिंध कितने हजार सालों से वो अपना रूट बनाता हुआ कभी कहां से कभी कहां से अपनी धरती को जन्म देते हुए Over several millennia farmers like Ghulam Muhammad have tilled the rich sediments deposited by the Indus इसमें कोई भी फसल जो है कोई भी पौधा आप लगाओ तो वो दरिया सिंध की तरह चमकदार रहता है ऐसा कोई पौधा मेरे ख्याल में नहीं हो जो आप इस जमीन में लगाएं और वो ना उगे इसकी खूबसूरती का राज जो है वो ये है कि ये दरिया सिंध से मुसलक है दरिया सिंध का किनारा है इस मिट्टी में दरिया सिंध का जो दूर-दूर से जो रेत आता है उसकी खुशबू आती है but now, all this bounty is threatened. And so is Pakistan's food. temperature ये तो 10 15 साल से बड़ा है पहले तो नहीं होता था पान की फसल यहां बड़े तादाद में होती थी पान का जो पौधा है इसको ज्यादा से ज्यादा 23 से 25 सेंटीग्रेड का टेंपरेचर जो है वो उनके लिए फायदेमंद है अगर इससे बढ़ जाए 32 तक भी चला जाए तो उसमें ये पौधा जो है वो उनको सूट नहीं कर पाता तो अभी वो पौधे भी खत्म हो रहे हैं द डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द डेल्टास रिवर आइन फॉरेस्ट्स are partly to blame for the rise in temperatures. A forest not only moderates heat and storms, it also provides refuge to some very special creatures, like the endangered and elusive hog deer. With its short legs and long body, it creeps under any barriers keeping its head low, just like a hog, hence the name hog deer.
for a shy deer, it helps to have antlers that look like dried branches. And these impressive racks are replaced every year. Bucks are solitary and will only come together during the breeding season when they try to impress females with their antlers. Historically, hog deer were hunted by lions, tigers and leopards. Those predators are long gone. But there's still a good reason for the hog deer to keep its guard up. The Mugger Crocodile A freshwater apex predator perfectly adapted to rule the waters of the Indus Delta. Their eyes sit at the top of their head to better scan their surroundings. A waterproof membrane lets them open their eyes even when fully submerged. Their snout is more sensitive than human fingertips, the better to spot any movement. Their powerful tail can propel them up to speeds of 30 kilometers an hour. To traverse soggy mud banks, mugger crocodiles are equipped with webbed feet but it's their jaws that really demand respect. Powered by formidable muscles, the crocodile's bite is the strongest in the animal kingdom. And their stomachs are the most acidic, so the mugger can digest almost anything. These impressive survival skills haven't changed much since the time of the dinosaurs. But now, mugger crocodiles and hog deer have been wiped out from most of their home range. Their future, along with that of the farming and fishing communities in the Delta, is in great danger. Humans and wildlife are now competing for the depleted natural resources. पानी ना होने की वजह एक तो सीजनल बारिशें नहीं होती हैं पीछे जो बर्फ जो गिरी हुई होती हैं वो पिघलते नहीं हैं पानी दरियासन में जो होता है उनको वो बांध के रख देते हैं या कट्स में या जो किनाल्स हैं उनको दे देते हैं या ड्रेम्स में छोड़ देते हैं डेल्टा इलाके के हिस्से का जो पानी है वो टाइमली नहीं छोड़ते हैं तो फिर हमारा नुकसान होता है जब मीठा पानी का बाव बंद हो जाता है तो अर्बेंसी का पानी है वही अंदर आ जाता है लाखों एकड़ के तादाद में जो है वो जमीन बंजर पड़ी हुई है दूसरी ऐसी जमीन भी बंजर हुई है जिन पर जैसे खारे पानी का सेपेज है तो अपने बड़ों से सुनकर हमें तो यकीन भी नहीं होता कि जिस जगह अभी हम जाते हैं कि भाई इधर कोई चावल होते होंगे या कोई सब्जियां फल फ्रूट होते होंगे हमें तो यकीन नहीं आता पुराने दौर के जो फसलें होती थी यानी कि बंदा रिलैक्स होता था कि भाई ये मैं फसल लगाऊँगा इसकी इनकम ये मुझे मिलेगी आज का जो बंदा लगा भी रहा है उसको तसली नहीं है पता नहीं मौसम की वजह से ये होंगे भी या नहीं होंगे पता नहीं गर्मी कितने तक स्टॉप करेगी हो सकता हो इसमें बारिश भी हो जाए The Indus Delta, once an oasis of serenity is now being slowly engulfed by the waters of the Arabian Sea. In our time, there was water in our time. In our time, there was water to the sea. There was water to the sea. A delicate equilibrium between sweet and salty water, sustaining a bounty of fish and generations of fishermen, 
is now out of balance. वो मछली थी वो जो फले हम देते थे पान छ किले का मगर वो मिलता नहीं है कि मीठा पानी नहीं है पल्ले के लावा कुली था मोराखी था सिंगारा था ठेली था और भी मछी था अच्छे पानी में मीठे का मछी आता था अभी तो वो नहीं है ये काला पानी अभी हमारा किस्ती गई पल्लू के ऊपर छ का पला लेके आया एक दो लीटर तेल लेके जाता है ढाई सौ रुपया उसका होता है तीन सौ रुपया बचता है उसमें बस आटा लेके बच्चों को खुलाता है पहले जो वो मला था वो बहुत खुश था उसका इतना खर्चा नहीं था वो अपने गांव में रहता था उधर ही मच्छी मारता था उधर ही अपना गुजारा करता था अभी इधर तो मछली है ही नहीं तो आदमी को जो मला है उसको तो बाहर जाना पड़ता है हमारा आदमी जो है जो मछली नहीं पकड़ता है वो बेचारा लकड़ी काटता है लकड़ी काट के बेचता है उसको सौ रुपया दो सौ रुपया मिलता है वो बच्चों का आटा लेता है Sadly, the victims of environmental degradation are now contributing to the wetlands destruction. Main jo cheez hai wo pani hai. Pani aa gaya to hamare andar ek hausla aa jata hai. Delta ke tabah hone ke jo jo raaz hain wo wahi hain ke darya sun ka pani nahi aane ki wajah se delta wo tabah hua hai. जो लोग हैं वहां से माइग्रेट हुए माल मवेशी का खात्मा हुआ है पुराने जो आसार कदीम थे वो भी तबाह बर्बाद हो चुके हैं 1.2 मिलियन पीपल हैव ऑलरेडी माइग्रेटेड फ्रॉम द श्रिंकिंग इंडस डेल्टा टू द स्प्रॉलिंग सिटी ऑफ कराची एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ मोहाना हैव अबैंडन देयर एंशिएंट फ्लोटिंग विलेजेस Pakistan's beautiful wetlands, home to a spectacular collection of wildlife, are now in great danger. But their slow strangulation will come back to haunt us. When millions of our people will have to face water scarcity, rising temperatures, and the gathering storm threatening our planet. <laughs>